Hi friends, in today's episode, episode number 16, we have actually crossed almost, I would say, 70% of the concepts under Varos management system. And right now we are getting into the functionality of packing and containerization. So if you're watching this video for the first time, my name is Sriram Sivashankaran and I have been posting videos, articles, documents related to Microsoft Dynamics 365. So if you want to get regular updates, make, make sure that you follow my profile in LinkedIn or if you're using YouTube, Make sure you subscribe to the channel D365 Talks. Okay, so we covered uh, most of the topics related to advanced warehousing management, and uh, right now we are in episode number 16. And in this episode number 16 and 17, we will be covering primarily about the packing and containerization. So I will not get into de very. This will not be a detailed session, but uh, this session will definitely help you to configure the packing and containerization. And go ahead with uh, in case if you are using the packing and containerization functionality in D365, right? So we'll com cover complete basics out of these two. Let's quickly get into this. First of all, the agenda for today's session is like we will be covering about the packing and containerization, what exactly uh, packing and containerization is, and what are all the configurations which are actually required. So in today's episode, we will be covering about only these two. And in episode number 17, we will be covering about how to configure a multi-level work template and uh, in order to do a packing and packing and containerization and followed by how the overall process flow when we talk about packing and containerization in the overall process flow where exactly it fits so we will also try to come do a complete cycle so that you understand how to do a, a containerization and uh, the subsequent processes right so so let's get into today's topic so packing and containerization basically defines the container packing process lets you validate the inventory items and pack them into containers. Let's say you have created a sales order or a transfer order where you want to where you want to have a packing process where they where you have a dedicated worker who can validate the inventory items and pack them into the containers. So in those cases you can use the packing and containerization um, functionality in D365. During this process, various workers typically pick the inventory items from the bulk storage areas and move them to a packing area. So typically this is how it happens. I will also quickly skip the slides to show you a typical for process. So for example, the bulk storage, you have the materials which is being received and stored in bulk storage locations. From those bulk storage locations, you need to move the material to a packing station. So where the materials are typically packed in your warehouse locations. And uh, once it is moved to a packing location, then the worker who need to perform the packing or containerization, he or she will complete the packing using the cotton boxes, and then it is go. F it, then it goes for the dispatch, right? So if this is the process you if you are following, generally this is used in case of uh, large scale manufacturers or distributors who have a warehousing facility in their premises, right? So this is what I am trying to say over here. So warehouse workers typically pick the inventory items from the bulk storage and move them to a packing area. And there are multiple virus workers check the item quantities and types, assign them to appropriate container sizes. So let's say when they are moving the material to the packing station where you have different packing types, the container types. So for boxes uh, which you have, you need to validate and based on that, if you want to do the packing, then that is also possible. You can assign the container types. And when a container is fully packed, it's closed and moved to the outbound dock area where it's made ready for shipment. So I'll just skip the slide. So like I said here, once the container is packed, it is moved to the shipping location. And from the shipping location, the material will be loaded into the loaded into the truck. Uh, so this is the typically the process which is followed. So let's get back to the slide. So this is how why this is how, why exactly we want to get into packing and containerization functionality in D365. So what are all the configurations which are actually because there are a lot of configurations which are actually required in order to achieve uh, achieve the overall functionality of containerization and packing in D365. But uh, let's try to quickly understand some of the basics which are required in order to perform a basic packing and can containerization work in uh, D365. Right. First of all, uh, I. I've just captured only the basic configurations. So if you do these configurations, you will be definitely able to perform the uh, packing packing uh, functionality in D365. So first of all, let's look at the location configurations. You need to configure the location, location types, location profile, and also you need to configure the location types in the various management parameters. So if I get into various management and then under setup, we have various. 
let me click on locations so as you know uh, from the beginning we have been using this varo 16a iphone wms so i have created a separate location for the uh, packing itself and assigned the location profile id packing so the important point here is the location profile id should contain a location type which is of pack right because the same location type like i mentioned here um, the location profile the location type is important so the location type need to be configured in your uh, work class id also so because the virus person who is going to perform the um let me collapse all setup the mobile device if you remember in our session in our episode on recording the mobile device we showed you how to configure the mobile device menu item so if the person is going to perform the picking operation um so let's say sales picking operation we have actually configured the sales or classes over here in the respective mobile device menu items so until unless it is configured the work classes are configured you cannot perform the work using the mobile device but this work classes let's say if i assign this work class um so load this work class should contain the location type pack so that's what i'm trying to say sir. so that's why i mentioned location type need to be assigned in your work class id also first you create a location define the location type for packing the same location type need to be configured in your location profile and the same location type need to be configured in your work class id also right and last but not least the same location type need to be configured in your varos management parameter under a general tab you have a packing location type so here also you need to have the same packing uh, same location type which need to be configured so system that's how it uh, connects the dots whatever you have configured in the location location type and location what location type in what class id and location type in um, location profiles and uh, what are the location type which you have configured in the varus management parameter right so this is the first important setup which you need to make sure that in order to perform a packing operation next one is the container type like i said you can have a different containers or cotton boxes in simple terms uh, which based on the sizes so you, typically the workers use the container types to pack inventory items into specific type and size of packaging so it can be basically you if you go to varus management parameter sorry varus management and setup um, and then uh, there is option called containers where you can define the container types so you can define the boxes based on the kind of uh, containers which you have it can be bins or uh, some kind of uh, specialized storage um, storage storage container types which you have you can configure it in the system so that uh, the same container types can be used to pack and uh, dispatch your material so you can provide the weight um, container dimensions uh, whatever the maximum dimensions you provide the same over here the maximum volume height so these system will try to use these in order to when the system tries to perform the containerization process right so this is very very important setup when you are trying to perform the containerization next i would say is the container packing policy container packing policy and packing profile are interlinked to each other so by definition each container packing policy defines how a container should be processed so we have discussed about what a container is but in the container packing policy we actually define how this container need to be processed each time that you create a new container you will select a container packing policy to apply it so we will take the second point in the next episode when we do the demo on how to create the container types and assign the container packing policy but in this episode we will try to understand what container packing policy configuration looks like so for container packing policy configuration you have to go to setup and the varus management so under varus management setup under containers you have container packing policies so this actually defines how the container type need to be consolidated and packed so that's what we have mentioned here container should be processed right so let's click on new so here uh, we'll type the varus 16a wms container i am putting auto i'll tell you why i'm putting auto uh, so this is the packing policy which we are configuring first you can provide the weight unit uh, we can provide the weight unit as kg or kilogram based on the whatever the unit which you follow in your uh, manufacturing premises and the first one is the container closing policy let's say you have packed your container um the container type using a cotton box you have packed it how you want to close it do you want to automatically release and close that container or 
do you want to delay it so if, there will be three options over here delay it or it is optional the worker has to decide it whether you want to create subsequent work once you define a policy closing policy over here then using this policy system will further check okay so if you want to automatic release after that what you want to do you want to make the item the complete the the packed item should be available in the final shipping location or do you want to create a work so that from the packing location you want to move it to the shipping location so that's what i have mentioned it in over here in the slide so you packed it but you want to directly move it to a shipping location or you want to create a work to move it from a packing location to a shipping location how you want to do it so that's what the policy actually defines but in this case if you define create work you need to provide an appropriate work template also so if i give a container release policy you need to provide a appropriate work template so i have already created a work template um, but let me duplicate this tab and let me show you that also because you can note here the work order type is packed container picking okay it's not sales order so you need to create a work order type as packed container picking if you are going to create a work so let me go to work template uh, so all work then uh, we have uh, work work template so we have work template over here so if i select the you have to select the work order type as uh, uh, packed container picking so this actually need to be configured um, not under sales order so if you define pack to work container picking then that particular work template comes over here in the system so make sure that if you are giving create work and um, work to move containers then you need to configure the work template also uh, without which you will not able to find the work getting created also you need to make sure that there's like the appropriate varrows over here so i am selecting the varrows 16a hyphen wms and you can select the default shipping location also it comes from the uh, shipping location which we have configured so i think rest all configurations are not required if you want i will share the link of microsoft learn uh, please make sure that you check out the same if you want to get into details of manifest and group manifest and all okay so this is how you configure the container packing policies and once the container packing policy is configured then under pack no uh, i think yeah under packing this is also under setup packing you need to configure the packing profiles so that's the next setup which we have um, so packing policies packing packing profiles you need to configure packing profiles are required for the packing process so how you are going to perform the packing process that is basically configured using the packing profile so let me get back to the packing profile so here you can create a new packing profile id so already i have created a packing profile id so i'll just walk through the same so you can assign the container packing policy here which we have created right now so you can assign the policy over here and uh, how the container id need to be created whether it is automatic or manual so you can define it uh, based on the what type of container id which you use and uh, these checkboxes we will primarily discuss in the next episode where i will tell you how, how each and every um, checkboxes plays a vital role uh, but here you can define the container type also uh, by default this container type will will be populated in your uh, packing screen right so this also we will see in the next episode and the next important configuration is for the worker so workers let me click on uh, the virus management because uh, if you go to setup under setup we have worker the worker also need to be configured for the packing policies so this is the worker my shri ram shankaran so you need to configure the container packing policy or the packing profile id so let's say if i capture the packing profile id then the container packing board is automatically updated because this is the container packing policy which we have which we have actually configured in this packing profile so this is actually automatically captured and uh, you need to make sure that save the option so that then only the user will be able to only this assigned user under this virus will be able to perform the packing so let's say you have a separate user who picks and uh, puts the material in the packing location and there is a different user who actually performs the packing operation so you need to assign the appropriate users in the work users session in the worker section okay so for these are the basic configurations which are actually required i will also share the microsoft i learn link so that you please walk through the 
uh, detailed description from recommended by the Microsoft for the configurations so that you get an idea about how to configure the system for packing and containerization. So in our next episode, we will get into the actual demo of containerization using multi-level work template and also container closing policy. And um, we will see what are, how the system performs in order to perform the packing and containerization, right? So like I said, in the next episode number 17, we'll cover the packing and containerization part two. And in episode number 18, we will be getting into the topic of cross-talking, right? If you want to get regular updates, please make sure that you subscribe to the channel D365 Talks. Or if you are using LinkedIn, then make sure that you follow my profile. Thank you.